Hi, this is a good example of a question where you're given the first differential f dash x of a function of x or f prime x as some people call it and you're asked to find the equation of a tangent and also asked to find what f of x was. So what have we got here then? We've got the point P which has coordinates 4 minus 1 lies on the curve C with equation y equals f of x where x is greater than 0. And f dash x or as I said earlier f prime x as some people know this as is equal to a half x minus 6 all divided by the root of x plus 3. And in the first part, we've got to find the equation of the tangent to the curve C at the point P, giving your answer in the form y equals mx plus C, where m and C are integers. And then in part B, we've got to go on to find f of x. OK, so how are we going to go about this? Well, first of all, for part A, we've got to find the tangent then to the curve C at the point P. What I want to do is draw a sketch. Now, I don't know what this graph's going to look like, and to be honest, it doesn't really matter at this stage. But I do want to encourage you to think of just drawing sketches at times, not to be afraid of doing them. I'm just going to have this point here, let's say P. P is the point with coordinates, what is it, 4 minus 1. So mark that in as 4 across, 1 down, 4 minus 1. And we've got some curve f of x. As I say, I don't know what it looks like, so don't write in please and say, oh, you've got f of x wrong. I know I most probably have. So, okay, it's just to demonstrate a point. So we've got our curve y equals f of x. And at this point p, we're looking to find the equation of this tangent. So if I draw the tangent at that point there, then being a straight line, I know it says find it in the form y equals mx plus c, but I'm going to work off the equation of a line when you know that it passes through a certain point and you've got its gradient. And I'm going to use the form y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1, a form that you should know already then for the equation of a straight line. So I know x1 and y1 x1 is the point P with a value of 4, and y1 is the minus 1. All I've got to get is m, the gradient. And I can get m very easily because m is given by the first differential of f of x. Okay, f dash x. You might think of it as dy by dx. So all I need to do then is find out what the gradient is at the point where x is 4. In other words, f dash 4. And that's our starting point here. So we could say that since we've got f dash x okay, equals a half x minus 6 over root x plus 3, then we can say therefore f dash of 4 is going to be half of 4 minus 6 over the square root of 4 plus 3. And if we work this out, we've got half of 4 is 2. We've got here 6 divided by square root of 4, which is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we've got 2 minus 3, which is minus 1. Add 3 is 2. So we've got a gradient of 2. So that's our gradient of the tangent. So we're in a position then to say that therefore the equation of the tangent, and I'm just writing a short intro just to make it easier to read, I hope. Equation of the tangent is, and what is it? Well, according to this form, it's now going to be y minus y1, y minus minus 1, okay? And then that equals the gradient, m, which we've seen is 2, multiplied by x minus x1. x1 is the 4. OK, so all I've got to do now is just clean this up, get it in that form that we require, y equals mx plus c. So if we do this, we've therefore got y plus 1, 
equals, and if we expand the bracket, we got 2x minus 8. And now all I've got to do is subtract 1 from both sides, so therefore I have that y equals 2x and minus 8 minus 1 is minus 9. And so y equals mx plus c form. Just for the record, the gradient then would be 2 and our tangent would cross the y-axis at minus 9. So in some ways this sketch here looks reasonable for the equation of the tangent. Now in part b we've got to go on and find out what f of x is. And to get f of x, f of x is going to be given by the integral of f dash of x with respect to x, f dash of x with respect to x. Okay? So, therefore, f of x is going to equal the integral then of our function up here. Now, to integrate something like this, I've got to get the terms in the form ax to the power n. And the first term is, but this term here, 6 over the square root of x, isn't. I've got to rearrange this. Now, the root of x is x to the power half, but because it's on the bottom of the fraction, we need to think of this as 1 over x to the power half, which then is x to the power minus a half when we bring it up to the top. So we need to change that. I've got for the first term then half x, but for the second term it's changed to minus 6x to the power minus a half. And then we've got the plus 3. And we're integrating all of this, so remember to put it in brackets, with respect to x because we've got more than one term here. We've got in fact three terms. Okay, so in the usual way, when we're integrating terms like this, we add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So for the first term, we've got a half multiplied by, now just add 1 to the power, so it's x to the power 2, and divide by the new power 2. Okay, so half of x squared over 2. As for the next term, we've got minus 6, add 1 to the power of minus a half, so you've got plus a half now, and divide by the new power. So that's dividing by a half. And as for the constant, when you get a constant, just put an x against it. So you've got plus 3x there. And we mustn't forget the constant of integration, plus c. And you can use any letter you like. k is also another very common one that you get. So uh, leave it up to you to put in any value there. Now we're just going to tidy this up. So we've got that therefore f of x equals and half of x squared over 2 is going to be x squared over 4. And then if we divide 6 by a half, a half will go into 6 12 times. So we've got minus 12 x to the power a half. Then we've got plus 3x, and then we've got plus c. Now we've got to work out what that constant c is. And we can do that very easily because we know that the curve f of x passes through this point p. In other words, when x is 4, y would be minus 1. Or we could say f of 4 gives minus 1. And that's what I'm going to say here. We're going to say that given that f of 4 equals minus 1, I can therefore go on to say that therefore minus 1 here must equal, and if we put x in as 4 here, we've got 4 squared, which is 16, divided by 4 is going to give us 4. And then we've got x to the power half, 4 to the power half, that's the square root of 4, which is 2, minus 12 times 2 is minus 24. And then you've got plus 3 times 4, that's 12, plus the constant c. And if we just work out the right-hand side, we've got minus 8. And then if we add 8 to both sides, we get 8 minus 1, 
which is going to leave us with 7. So C is going to equal 7. So therefore, what we have is that f of x must equal x squared over 4, or a quarter x squared, that's up to you how you want to write it, minus 12x to the power half, and then plus 3x, and then we've got plus c, and c we've just seen is 7. And there you go, there's f of x. So I hope that's given you some idea then if you had any problems with that particular question.